for this week's YouTube video, I recently came across a great Medscape quiz. I don't know if any of you guys do the Medscape quizzes that are sent out in people's email. I get the emails um, of certain quizzes and I don't always do them, um, but if they pertain to me and I'm interested in that certain topic, I always do them. And this uh, email a couple weeks ago came out um, was a quiz about cellulitis. And I was like, oh, this is great. I should definitely do this. I see this all the time in the emergency department. And I thought it was a great quiz and it was a great review of cellulitis and I learned a lot from it. So I thought it would be a good idea to do a video on it. So let's get started. When it comes to cellulitis, this usually refers to a non-necrotizing inflammation of the skin. Um, Usually there is some sort of breach in the skin, um, a tear or a micro tear, or it can be due to the invasive quality of the bacteria that might be attacking into the skin. Certain risk factors put people um, at an increased probability of getting cellulitis. Uh, for instance, if you have edema in your legs or if you have eczema on your skin, if you have any toe space uh, areas of uh, cracked skin like antinia pedis, if you have poor lymphatic drainage, or if you are obese. And then sometimes uh, if you've had a recent mastectomy or poor lymphatic drainage for whatever reason, or if you've had your saphenous vein taken out for whatever reason, that puts you at an increased risk for cellulitis as well. And in those two cases, uh, the cellulitis can even arise up to years later. And I did not know that in Medscape did a little blurb about that, which was quite interesting to me. So when it comes to the complications of cellulitis, you are gonna to wanna to keep these in mind because these patients can become septic. Um, so that's probably the worst complication because you can definitely die from that. Other complications and uh, more common ones that I see are lipangitis, abscess formation. Um, you could always come across necrotizing fasciitis. And these are things you are not gonna wanna miss with cellulitis and reasons you don't want to miss cellulitis in general because you're going to want to start these patients on antibiotics to prevent further complications. And I say antibiotics because the most common causes of cellulitis are um, bacteria and staph and strep are the most common causes. Strep being uh, the most common cause of non-purulent cellulitis and staph being the most common cause of purulent cellulitis. When it comes to abscess formation, um, you're going to want to have MRSA on your differential as well. Anything that causes a pocket of infection, you're going to want to definitely cover for MRSA. And then if you have any immunocompromised patient or a diabetic, um, always consider pseudomonas and keep that in mind when you choose the antibiotic that you're going to be on for the treatment of their cellulitis. So when it comes to the symptoms of cellulitis, um, you're most often going to see a localized area of skin that's red, hot, and swollen. Um, and it's very tender to palpation with the touch. Um, you might have associated um, lymphadenopathy uh, proximal to that area. And then if this area is becoming too infected, um, you could have fevers, body aches, malaise, chills, all of those symptoms. Um, the most common area that is affected is the legs. Um, and then kind of comparing cellulitis versus other things, erysipelas will have more sharply demarcated borders and it's most commonly on the face. Um, that's caused by strep, so it's just a certain kind of cellulitis, um, but cellulitis in general will not have sharply demarcated borders. Um, sometimes it's really hard to pick up when actually the erythema starts and to mark those borders with the skin marker. And then um, kind of comparing this to necrotizing fasciitis, this is going to pop up very quickly. Um, you're going to have severe pain from the patient, and then you might feel a little crepitus on exam. So when it comes to the treatment of cellulitis, like I mentioned before, um, you're going to want to put these patients on antibiotics. Um, so when it comes to just your basic cellulitis, no complications of abscess, lymphangitis, um, and no fevers, body aches, chills, or if immunocompromised, um, just start these patients on a simple antibiotic that will cover for um, gram positive, so staph and strep are the most common. So I use uh, Keflex uh, very commonly, um, Augmentin sometimes, um, amoxicillin. And then when you are concerned about an abscess formation or you drained an abscess already, uh, just cover for MRSA. So I usually pick Bactrim or Clindamycin for these patients. Um, 
And then if you have any systemic symptoms, uh, the patient's a diabetic, uh, they're immunocompromised, um, get labs on these patients. Look at their white blood cell count, check their lactic acid levels. Sometimes you want to get an ESR, CRP. And um, if they have any abnormalities in this, or uh, they're systemically having fevers from their uh, a pocket of infection, you're going to want to admit these patients and start them on IV antibiotics. Um, I had a patient come in a couple of days ago. She was a diabetic, not insulin the type. Um, she had an area on her toe that was infected, not getting better for the past month. And I was like, well, let's just grab some labs and hopefully they look good and you can go home. No, they were not good. Her white blood cell count was 20K. Um, her lactic was fine, but ESR and CRP were both elevated. And so after running it past the hospital, as he agreed with the mission for a couple of days, um, and I just checked up on her and she was doing well. But um, always consider just grabbing some labs based on how comfortable you are. Because if you have a young, healthy patient coming in with cellulitis, they are probably going to do okay for outpatient therapy. But if you have a diabetic, um, no matter the type, insulin dependent or not, um, an obese patient, um, or chronically ill patient or immunocompromised by any means or systemic symptoms, grab labs and consider admission from there. And that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. If you want to further review cellulitis, I highly recommend the Medscape quiz. Um, I learned a lot from it, and it was an awesome review of um, cellulitis and what to do in certain situations. So go check that out. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and like it at the bottom. Um, and if you like Met Geeks, you should subscribe to our page. And if you want to check out other videos of mine, click the links above. All right.